Welcome back, everybody. Uh, it is uh, good morning here. <laughs> good good evening or good, good afternoon morning. if you're tuning in from wherever. Uh, so from high demand, we are going to be doing a tour um, of our buildings, of all of the outbuildings that we have here. Um, so you can see behind me, I have these two wood sheds. This is where we're going to start. Uh, this is where we keep all of our wood. Yeah, the difference between the two buildings and why we have two buildings is uh, the one is for the upstairs or the downstairs. Uh, um, wood burning stove and then this one here is for the smaller one uh, you'll see in the future video uh, the sizes that we use but obviously one size is bigger than the other and uh, we also keep the wood in here uh, that we've cut down to cure and dry uh, for the following season and uh, the stuff that we're currently going to be burning is going to be inside but uh, we don't have it set up like that uh, quite yet. <laughs> yeah not quite yet anyways not quite yet next year uh, and we won't have the massive amount of snow sitting in our way either. We're going to have it a nice smooth transition so uh, we're not falling on our rear ends when we're going down the ice. Yeah, that's more me than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so those are our woodsheds. Next we're going to head on over to our workshop. Uh, no, actually let's head over to the future. Oh yes, that's the right. The future building that we're going to be uh, converting into yes. a little something. So let's head over in behind the woodsheds. Uh, you can't see the building, but uh, we've come up with an idea with one of the buildings that uh, we're super excited, we are super about. excited about. So let's <laughs> take a walk. All right, that building right back here, that's going to be our, uh, well, what it is right now is a, a fuel building but uh, we're going to be converting it into something so let's head on in and uh, kind of show you what we're going to do with this. Go ahead you go first. All right now we're inside uh, and uh, doesn't look like much but Not what, right now. yeah right now <laughs> we're going to clear this out this is our uh, well the second fuel building that the previous owner had uh, and parts building whatever you want to call it but uh you want to tell everybody what we're turning this thing into yeah so we are going to uh clear out all the fuel and everything um all the stuff that's here probably leave the shelves uh, because they'll be really handy uh, when we build it as a sauna uh so what we're going to do is uh, build a few benches obviously we have to insulate the whole place uh, because it's just wood uh, just logs at this point so it doesn't have insulation um, and we'll have to put a wood burning stove in here uh, and make sure that there's room for a, a pipe to come out and make sure that that's good but uh, yeah we're really excited this is probably our our, our first really big planned home project um, yeah that's what we'll be into exactly yeah. it's not going to be uh, too bad because uh, well the most expensive part now is going to be wood because uh, Wood has just shot skyrocketed. out, yeah, skyrocketed. <laughs> but uh, the wood burning stove is going to be pretty simple. Where uh, we have one in the shop that you're going to see next. Uh, it's just a small one that's going to work perfect for here. But yeah, get some uh, plywood in here, uh, build some benches, and uh, let her Insulate rip. Insulate it, and yeah, yeah there, there we go. We'll have our own homemade sauna. So super, super excited for that. So stay tuned for yeah. that progress. I'll be coming up this year. <laughs> so sometime in the spring, summer, fall, sometime yep. this year. But we're really excited for that. So yeah, uh, yeah. Well, let's, uh, and the best part about this actually is right next door. He used to store his propane tanks and pull all that stuff out and uh, put in all the wood that we need. So. Uh, when the, when we need wood for the sauna, we can just run around the run corner, around you know, the corner. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and pick right it there. up. Yeah. All right. Perfect. So uh, that's this building, and and you guys have now seen this one. So we're gonna head on over to the shop, I believe. Yeah. Let's go to the and, shop uh, and show you guys uh, what the shop looks like. Absolutely. Let's go. So we are now in front of our shop. Um, you can see that it's a rather tall building. We've got two levels. Uh, so we'll take you inside and show you uh, both levels and what's up there. Um, we also have a little uh, a little uh, addition that was built onto the shop, um, and that's where we keep the diesel generator and the little Honda generator that we have. Um, if you notice, uh, one of the really cool features about uh, this building actually is all of the the uh, wrought iron work that was done. Uh, so we've got the trees up top. The, this was one of the previous owners that was here that actually put all of this. He made it all and then put all of it up because he was a, a wrought iron worker, I believe. Yeah. So he made all of the 
decorations and things, all the, the black wrought iron work that you see. Um, we also have the chains hanging on the on the front too, give the it four that different ones. Look. Yeah, give it that rustic look and really kind of pull it all together. Um, yeah. yeah. Another feature that uh, uh, Kimberly has not seen or neither of us have seen is, uh, I'll show you real quick here. If you look at these things here, if you take a peek at these boxes here, those are for bats. So uh, they keep bats up there through, throughout the, sorry, maybe, I thought maybe a bat was flying out, but. <laughs> <laughs> a little cold no, for them. hibernating. But, yeah, they hold, those hold bats up in there and then uh, once uh, it warms up and all that and mosquitoes and m the black flies start flying around, they'll go around and fly around the property and take care of uh, the bugs or keep them at a minimum. And uh, they got a nice little grill on there as well that uh, they can climb up into. And uh, on the inside, you wouldn't even know because there's no smell, there's no moisture, uh, there's no sound. Yeah, really well done. So it's a really nice feature and cool. I can't. I think we can't wait to see these b bats <laughs> flying around and yeah. uh, uh, yeah. see what they'd take care of for us. The, uh, the previous owners have said that there were quite a bit of bats flying around. There were quite a few of them. Um, and they actually had them on the house, but then that was a problem because they were too close to the house and there was uh, uh, feces and stuff everywhere. So they moved them over here uh, and they said for the, for the couple years that they were here, it worked really well and they didn't have a problem really with mosquitoes and black flies and bugs, uh, which I'm really excited about because mosquitoes seem to really like me. So <laughs> it's a sweet sugar, <laughs> so I'm, a sweet uh, blood, should I say. <laughs> I'm really excited uh, to, to be able to actually see them. I've never seen a bat in real life. So I guess we'll see come the spring or the summer whenever they start coming out of hibernation. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, let's, well, head on let's take a look inside. Now we're in the shop. Yes. So we are now uh, inside the shop, and I'm going to let Andre take this one because this is his man cave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but having been in here, actually, it's a really big building, um, and it's it's it was organized when we got here, uh, but Andre's done quite a bit of work since we've been here in terms of uh, just organizing his tools and getting everything the way he wants it to be. So Some I'll people's organizational <laughs> skills are different from others. <laughs> I'll let him explain how things work around here. Um, yeah, it, w it was organized, but like I said, everyone has their different way of organizing. So they had a lot of um, like random buckets and, and, and containers full of like the same screws, nuts and bolts. So going through everything, kind of organizing uh, what's needed, what's not needed. Um, one of the things they do out here is they don't throw anything out, which is kind of nice, but at the same time, like, sometimes you got to call it, you know, like, hey, I'm really not going to need this chunk of steel sitting around here <laughs> or, or parts from uh, 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 something, that's something that is that or that's not even on the property anymore, yeah. you know, like, um, so yeah, we do keep the UTV in here. And uh, if anyone's been wondering why I don't have a little roof on the UTV, uh, that's sitting outside and I took it off because it doesn't fit in here with the roof on it. So uh, we just uh, made it into a convertible and it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, the old version of the BMW. <laughs> that's right. Um, another nice feature in here is they uh, turned this uh, old barrel into a stove in here. So when it does get cold outside, I can uh, throw on some wood and uh, heat it up to whatever I want and uh, going up the stairs there they have a little partition where you can just fold it down and now the heat won't rise into the uh, upper, um, floor. upper floor and uh, heat up unwanted space so then I can just contain the heat down here but uh, for the most part it's uh, got everything I need. Um, I got power throughout here. I did install some solar powered lighting in here so that I don't have to run the generator uh, every time I want some extra lighting. But I do have some fluorescent light fixtures in here just in case uh, I need that extra boost or I'm using some power tools. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be, uh, it's a nice space and uh, it's not completely done yet, but we're getting there I think. We're getting there, yeah. <laughs> It's a process. Exactly. It's a process. Um, so yeah, uh, let's head upstairs and see what's up there. Check out the, I guess, wine wine making kit or the yes. sorry beer making <laughs> kit, and uh, what else we got up there? Wood burning stove that we're gonna toss in the sauna. But uh, yeah, you'll get to see this place. I got my tools sorted out there. Just some gear for uh, uh, when we hit the road. I have my chains packed up, my tow gear ready to go for. 
uh, you know, you don't want to always be looking for that stuff. Hey, I'm heading into town now. You got to go find all your stuff. Uh, back here is uh, my compound bow, chainsaw, um, some other uh, electrical and plumbing stuff. And then back in here is I'm still organizing it, but that's going to be like my workshop. Uh, my power tools sitting up there. And, uh, you know, the odds and ends, skill saw, grinders, hammer drills, all the, all the toys that, you know, a man cave Men needs. Men like to have in their man cave. <laughs> That's right. So let's head upstairs <laughs> and uh, we'll see what's up there. Let's grab this and head up the stairs and uh, open up that flap. So that's the flap we're talking about that you can draw down and uh, Kimberly's just going to push that up. It's going to fold over to your left hand side. Exactly like that. Nothing it's, like uh, that for the biceps. <laughs> a little workout. <laughs> now that we're up here. <laughs> now that we're up here, uh, we do have uh, quite a bit of things uh, that are up here, kind of odds and ends. Uh, one thing that I'm super excited about that we found up here uh, were all of these cans, all of these jars that I can use for canning and preserving stuff. So super excited about that. Uh, this other box here uh, is, is the other box? bottles. Um, oh, <laughs> so bottles yeah, for this is for when I, uh, well, this is your beer making kit and uh, this is what I'm going to be uh, putting the beer into and uh, <laughs> I don't know, when she kicks me out of the house, I could just sit up here and uh, think about what I've done. <laughs> That's, right, it's the man cave. That's right, maybe set up um, a little bed in here somewhere, maybe too, you sure. never know. <laughs> you, uh, you could use the stove downstairs, but what we could also do is get one of these stoves fired up. So if you see here in the back corner, we have two. Um, and that actually leads to the next point is the smaller one that you see here that's not quite tucked back right in the corner. That's the one we're planning on using uh, for our sauna to be able to put in our sauna and have that installed. So that'll be, that'll be nice. Yeah, yeah. She, so anyone wanting to uh, have a good workout in, that thing's probably about 400 pounds. So head on over and uh, we'll strap it to your back and uh, you can just <laughs> walk down the stairs for me out to the sauna and uh, just... <laughs> Throw her in there if you don't mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. What else do we have here? We've got some gardening stuff in here. So we'll have lots of pots. Um, yeah, you name it. Edging for your for your your garden beds. Uh, welding shields as well. Lots of tarps for covering your uh, uh, vegetables to protect yeah, them from the so, frost. Yeah. Um, they did change out all the windows out there all, uh, at the on the house except for four. So they did leave us some uh, the four windows that need replacing. Um, on that note, we need to put spray foam on our uh, grocery <laughs> list because yes. uh, I'll be tossing that in sooner than later. Yeah, get um, replaced. And then when I get old and whatnot, they have they already left me a rocking chair. So <laughs> <laughs> that's for you to sit in and think about what you've done. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, we're, this is kind of just a odds and ends upstairs. Storage. You got some extra flooring in here yeah. as well, but uh, yeah, in here. So uh, on these angled pieces here, these are where the bats uh, are sleeping, uh, where they enter from the outside. And uh, as you can see, like you don't see any moisture anywhere. There's no uh, feces or anything like that. There's no smell. Kimberly yeah. would notice that for no, sure. The second you come up here. Very sensitive nose. Yeah, so yeah. Um, it's really cool. So uh, I'm sure we'll be posting some videos of these bats flying around, but. Uh, for right now, they're hibernating. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And it's cool how they just keep, kept the logs right throughout the whole building and yeah. uh, kept everything looking the same. Yeah. I think uh, that's it for this. So what are we doing next? The fruit cellar? I think, yeah, we'll go over to the root or cellar, the root show cellar. you guys the root cellar and see uh, see what that's all about. Yeah, so back downstairs here and then uh, we'll meet you outside on the, at the root cellar. Go ahead.
right, now that we're uh, here, <laughs> well, crawled out through all that snow there, but uh, from that uh, view that I was showing you, you can see that uh, this root cellar is uh, built into the ground, um, which is a cool feature and cool design. Uh, everyone living in the city these days has one typically in the basement, just uh, poured concrete, but uh, yeah, it's uh, we haven't utilized it yet. Uh, We've been in here a couple times just to see what it's all about and uh, how to plan things out. But uh, yeah, it's uh, built pretty tough. So it's almost like a prison style. You got one door here. And then... Uh, another door in here. Kimberly's got a flashlight. She's going to walk in there and I'm just going to grab the camera. So, it's it pretty is, dark in here, it's but... It's pretty dark, <laughs> which um, makes sense because it's underground. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, I don't know, I might put a solar powered light in here, but uh, it looks like they just got some some uh, paint in here. Actually, what are those brown bottles there? It looks, uh, let me get a sip of those. <laughs> More homemade beer. <laughs> More homemade beer, they left us some beer here, so that's uh, pretty cool. But uh, yeah, they got lots of space for storage in here, they got vents for uh, everything, uh, I think it's going to work out well. Other than that, I don't think there's much more to show in here. Nope, definitely smells like a root cellar, which yeah. isn't an unpleasant smell, it's just a little bit of a musty smell because it is underground um, and because you do have uh, things that are in here, mm -hmm. um, you have it close and in close quarters all the time. Um, and if we ever decided to use this for something else, Andre's right, this is kind of built like a little prison cell that's underground. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, but pretty cool. Uh, let's. Uh, I think that's about it for, yeah, for this thing, place. I think yeah. we're heading around back to the chicken yeah. coop and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, so chicken coop yeah, next, and we'll like meet you guys over there. there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, she's gonna close that up, and while she's closing that up, from here, uh, the chicken coop is up and behind here, and this is one of the uh, other gardens that we have. Um, it looks like they got some fruit trees in there, but uh, it also looks like uh, they lose, used to let the chickens free in there. Uh, I got some repairing to do on the fence. Uh, who knows, it could have been a bear that came in there and took her down, but uh, well, that brings us to the story where the neighbor was telling about us about the, the grizzly that came into this chicken coop. So not the previous owner, but uh, the guy that owned it before, he had chickens in there and um, the dogs were going off one night and uh, he opened the door and told the dogs to kind of shut up and not make so much noise. And I guess they stopped for, what was it, like 10, 15, or... yeah, well, a couple minutes or a couple, whatever it was, but they started back up again. And uh, this time he realized that it was something serious. So he went outside, come to find out that his uh, door to his chicken coop is ripped off and he's missing four chickens and he's seen the grizzly run away tailing with, it yeah, the woods. tailing it <laughs> with his chicken. So uh, I don't know, we're gonna put some security, uh, security, security up around here. Yeah. Well, we got the two, Dogs here, I never uh, yell at them for barking and uh, put some security lighting out there and you know, you always need some sort of security out in these areas. <laughs> so let's head around and... Uh... So this is our chicken coop here and uh, you'll see that we actually have a, the, again by the previous owner who was that wrought iron uh, mill worker. He's put this chicken that he's made on the front door, which is a really cool addition, just kind of a way of identifying it. Uh, but this is our chicken coop. You can see we've got bird houses up there. They made them out of logs, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, pretty simple. Let's take a look inside. Well, before we go inside, I don't want to <laughs> say a couple things. Uh, <laughs> so if you go up this ladder here, we got some storage for, uh, they got two big water containers up there. And the hose sticking out the end here so that I can just hook up the uh, a hose from uh, the house and then I can fill up these two containers and then that gravity feeds um, the chicken's water dishes into the backyard or should I say into the chicken run in the back. 
Um, and then at the same time, I can store the wood shavings up there, hay, uh, or, or anything else. A tank, come here. Come here. Why are you eating poison? Come here. Go, guys. Anyways, we don't need dogs eating poison live on screen on TV here. Anyways, they got some uh, rat poison in there. So if if you're asking why there's poison chicken coops, Roxy, no. Chicken coops uh, always tend to attract mice because of the feed and, and, and uh, just chickens in general. And you don't want them around there causing a nuisance. Uh, chickens will eat uh, mice like whole and then uh, they could choke and die. But uh, so they just found that out. It's new to them. They think it's all treats. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, let's head on inside and uh, check out what we got. Roxy, come here. Go. All right, you can go ahead and I'll make sure that they don't get in. <laughs> now that we got the dogs outside. <laughs> so those that say having dogs is not like having children. I beg to differ. Anyway, uh, so we are here inside uh, our chicken coop now. Well, uh, one side of it because yeah, we have another, we, there's got two the portions. Side. This is this is coming into the bigger door. So we have a few uh, tools and whatnot that we can use on a shelf over here. Uh, we've got more mouse killer. We've got lots of bottles um, and containers and stuff for food and everything else uh, that we need to use for the chickens. Oh, look, more planters. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. The things you find. Uh, and over here to your to your other side, you can see we've got a little bit of an enclosure. Uh, that would be where we would keep the chickens. Uh, what's really cool about this enclosure is it actually leads right out. There's a little door uh, that can be raised and lowered. Um, and there's a little door that leads right out into their backyard or to their little chicken run. All we'll do we've is we'll move this around this way and then you can go show them. <laughs> so that we're not getting comments later. And why didn't you show me this? All right, coming in here. So this is their little space that they would have inside. Uh, it's quite big. We're thinking we're probably going to have, tw I would think, 12. I think we ordered 12 chickens uh, that are coming. This down here is a door that I was just referring to. It can be opened and closed, like so, if we happen to open that up. Yeah, when we figure we, it out. We would go right into uh, their little enclosure back there, which is already fenced off really nicely. Uh, we may have to do some improvements come the spring, but for the most part, it's done already. Yeah, well, uh, actually what... Uh um, we were thinking about doing is uh, maybe keeping this one this year just for the chickens that we have coming in um, and then after that if you want you, you want to stay in the chicken coop no problem <laughs> <laughs> but so uh, yeah we'll have some chickens in here this year and uh, for next year we'll put all the rest of the chickens on the other side that we're going to show you in the uh, in a second which also has a run to the outside uh, but next year we plan on getting some goats and uh, I'm thinking uh, we could easily keep two goats in here uh, for overnight and then uh, let them wander outside throughout the day. Um, but um, that's one that's thing way, yeah, that's yeah. for next year. And that's just uh, one way we're looking at utilizing these buildings a little bit differently. And, uh, and a nice feature about this building too, that, uh, or this side of the chicken coop that uh, the other one doesn't have is this little container here. So in here you can keep all the uh, feed that you need, actually. Looks of it. Oh, that looks like uh, grass seed, so... I guess we're planting some grass this year. But, um, yeah, good size for keeping both chicken feed and for the goats. Um, and it's uh, sealed up really nice so the mice aren't getting in there. Uh, but we all know mice can dig their ways around and uh, open things back up. So we might be getting a cat at that, that, this point now too. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Have like a little mini farm our first year. Uh, we'll see what happens. Other than that, uh, we got power in here as well. So uh, keeping any heaters on for the chickens um, or lights to... Um, uh, to, to work in here at night or in the winter because in the winter we have sometimes like uh, what is it like 16 hours of darkest I think of uh, on our shortest day out here but uh, yeah so when you have livestock in the in the winter it's one thing to uh, 
to have in mind that you need to still feed them in the evenings and uh, Mother Nature doesn't care uh, what hours you're doing that at so you got to realize that you need light in here. Um, I might have to call an electrician in or something like that <laughs> to fix this uh, wiring job up but uh, hey it is what it is, it's chicken coop. Let's head on outside and uh, check out the other side uh, and then maybe hop around back. Yeah. Um, show the chicken run and uh, how the tubes run for the gravity feeder and what else yeah. we got. Then we'll, I guess, the other man cave. Other, we've got another one, two, three, four, four buildings. Five yeah, buildings, so this, this video buildings. might be a little longer yeah. than we anticipated. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> let's head over here. All right, now we're that we're... Thought this other one opened up. Okay, so this is the other half of the chicken coop uh, that we are looking at. Um, so if you look inside there, you can see it's it's quite large. Uh, there's there's still some shavings on the floor, so we're going to clean all of that out um, and make sure that we do that before our chickens come. We've got our heat lamps set up really well. You can see that there's a door in the back as well uh, for, uh, for chickens to be uh, going out into the run, which is really cool. We've got a feeder there. Yeah, the ro roost roasters or roosters, however you want to call them, uh, where the chickens sleep on. That heat lamp's actually got to go downstairs in the basement. Because uh, what we're going to be getting uh, is uh, uh, not full-grown chickens. We're going to get some youngins, and uh, we're going to have to keep them inside for the first for month. So. Month, yeah. So we're going to have to take that heat lamp inside, and we're going to keep them inside the house for about a month under the proper temperatures and making sure that they're getting all the, the water that they need and uh, the, the food that they need. And uh, that's coming in March, so before March I gotta get in here and uh, clean up all this and lay down new wood shavings and uh, uh, do a little disinfecting, disinfecting because uh, you, you want healthy chickens and you don't, you don't know what the previous chickens had uh, disease-wise or, uh, or what else. other animals, yeah, or anything else like yeah. that. Yep, so we got a good clean out and then it'll be ready to go, but that's fine because we've got until about April anyways uh, yeah. to do that. Because when they come home, and the chickens come home in March, as Andre said, they'll be downstairs in our basement, and we'll be feeding them and, and taking care of them uh, inside the house in the basement, mm -hmm. where it's nice and warm. Yeah. All right, let's head on over to, oh yeah, this uh, the rabbit run. That's right. say like right there and then you have it like this. Ah, no, we'll just keep it right here. Like this. Well, you can come beside me here while you're standing out of frame. Kimberly doesn't, <laughs> is camera shy at the moment. <laughs> but uh, right beside the uh, chicken coop, we have uh, a rabbit run here. So uh, it is one of our goals to maybe potentially get some uh, rabbits, keep them for meat. Uh, probably have two uh, male and female breed them and then uh, you raise the youngins and we'll use the youngins as the meat. As uh, meat, yep. Yeah, absolutely. And they have like a steel meshing there because uh, I'm sure the bears would love to get a piece of that tail. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, so really that, not much, it yeah, it's, it's, it, not it's, much it's great how all these like buildings the all match, yeah. match. So uh, not much to see here at the moment. Um, Actually, here's one building that we really want to uh, do a really thorough walkthrough of, and then that's our uh, outhouse. So you see wind chimes in there, so you can let the neighbors know when you've uh, done your uh, <laughs> right one <here>. or two. <laughs> yeah. They even have a little thing on the, on the front here, which is really nice. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta ring the bell just to make sure anybody's home. Now what's nice about this outhouse is it's not a typical outhouse. Uh, most people think of an outhouse and they're like, ew, outhouses are gross. And while it is just really a hole in the ground, yeah, so we've got a lot too much open snow. Open up too much, uh, but it, while it really is just a hole in the ground, you can see that they did a really they did a really good job of putting the, a proper toilet lid with a seat. Uh, there is a painting on they the back of the door. They painted it pink here. to there match my eyes. There's a on the walls. <laughs> like it's such a cute little outhouse. <laughs> so, hey, go in there. Have a seat. Can your feet yeah. touch the floor? <laughs> yes. Yes, we they go. can. I think this is the one place on the entire property where I can sit down somewhere and my feet touch the floor. Uh, but it's really cool. They have, oh, they've got a wrought iron mirror here too. They've got they have magazines in case you want some reading material. 
Uh, it's really cute. It's not your typical outhouse, uh, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't know it was an outhouse if it didn't have a, if I wasn't sitting on the toilet seat. So they've got quite a few things in here. It's it's really cool. Even a broom, everything swept clean. Even but a this chalk, is our little outhouse. Even a chalkboard for the teacher <laughs> and you. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, I get, in case I get struck by inspiration. Uh, yeah, but it's really cu cute. It's uh, it's very nice, um, and it's certainly convenient. One of the things um, when we are are starting to be outside a lot more in terms of gardening um, and being around the property and doing maintenance and stuff. It's going to be a little difficult uh, to go inside, well not difficult, but it's time consuming to have to go inside, use the washroom inside and everything else. So it's faster if you have an outhouse outside. Uh, I guess the previous owners thought the same as we would and they built an outhouse outside, uh, which is which is really cool. I really like it. It's quite nice. Um, I can't say that I'm super excited to use it, but it's cute and it's here and it's functional uh, and much nicer than your typical, than your typical outhouse that you'd find. All right, now that we've uh, seen how Kimberly goes to the bathroom. <laughs> ring the bell, let everyone know. There you go, woo! All right, watch your head here. Yeah, this is where I smacked my head last time. So this building here, really not much to see. It's, uh, it was their old generator building. We uh, may end up using it for fuel storage. This is probably one of the areas where we'll put a lot of the fuel and stuff that was used uh, in our in our what is going to be our sauna. Uh, we'll put it in here if we can fit it, and or around in the sheds and stuff. Yep. Uh, but at this point, it's just empty. We're going to use it for storage. Um, it's nice that it's here. It's small. It's compact. Uh, better to have it than than not have it. That's I right. Suppose. <laughs> That's right. And then uh, the next building here that we have. Here, check this out. This is. This is how Roxy swims in the snow. <laughs> this is all the, these all these trails that you see out here. They, they made these trails, and uh, we just kind of utilize them. And uh, by the looks of it, they're even making us some hiking trails out there. Uh, anyways, out there in the <laughs> that's right. Staying <laughs> on track. <laughs> this uh, last small building that we have here is a uh, smoker, and uh, they again converted it a old uh, looks like to me like a keg. It says uh, 1939 on it. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> yeah, they converted an old keg there into, uh, you'd uh, start a fire in there and then uh, the um, stove piping they took into the uh, smoker there so all the smoke can go in there and you can uh, smoke the meat. Hey, you want to open that up a little bit? Give yeah. them a tour of that. So it's got a little latch on here. And once I open it up, it's actually perfect height. You can imagine when the snow melts uh, to be able to stand here and actually have your meat on this, uh, on this rail here that we've got and you would you can see that there's a hole in the in the floor there that they've got with their barrel that's attached with a pipe uh, and that would be where the fire is in the barrel and it comes up and you smoke your meat that way yeah which is so it's really cool it's an outdoor smoker they've got some extra rails We're smoking there our meat the out here why are you talking dirty you got to keep this pg <laughs> uh, Anyway, <laughs> this would be what we would use uh, for taking care of the meat uh, for for deer or moose or anything else that we might that we might get in our desire to be more self-sufficient and self-sustained. Yeah, absolutely. Now, last but not least, oh, well, let's, let's walk down here and figure it out. Last thing we want to do is fall down. Underneath here. Where you see this barrel in front of here, we do have uh, our second garden um, right beside our the greenhouse. greenhouse. So we're gonna take a little tour in there, but again, can't see much because of uh, the three feet of snow. Final building, perfect. Okay, so this is our greenhouse uh, that we're super excited about. They did a really good job uh, with coating everything appropriately, making sure that everything was uh, weatherproofed and looked after. Uh, but this is the outside of our greenhouse. It's really well put together. Please Let's note, <laughs> trespassers will be composted. <laughs> More ice. So they do, they did keep, uh, they do have vents all across here. So even these, uh, these windows here, they open up to allow airflow. Uh, even up high, so you can let the heat out in the summer, which is really cool. And 
Let's stick this one right in here. Now that we're in the greenhouse, this is our greenhouse. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, so you can see that uh, behind me, I have a huge column here that's been built in uh, with, as a raised garden bed. There's also another one on the other side of here and on the other side of the building. And then we've got our, our uh, dirt walkway in the middle, which is really nice because we've got our two raised garden beds on either side. We also have raised garden beds along the side of the buildings. There's none on this side of the wall. There is on the other side of the wall though. Uh, we've got a, a thermometer um, and a humidifier in here just to make sure that we, uh, we're keeping the appropriate temperatures for when we are growing things in here. Uh, right now, obviously, we don't have anything going because we just got here. <laughs> Not yet. But uh, <laughs> come next winter, we may be growing some things probably into November, and then we may have to shut it down for December, January, February when it's a little bit colder. We do have uh, lots of material. If you look over on the other side here, we've got lots of pots, lots of pans. They've even got a little storage spot underneath uh, for us to have our seedlings, for us to grow everything. I'm not too experienced with gardening when it comes to knowing how to start things and what to do. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to getting to... Uh, they even have a Kimberly-sized <laughs> shovel in here. Perfect. <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, Andre knows more than gardening about gardening than I do, so I'm looking forward to learning. And, and obviously the both of us will be learning together as we go um, about what kinds of things work out here and what kinds of things don't. Um, if you recall a previous video, I did a bunch of calendars, uh, found out when the best times would be to grow things and the periods in which you're supposed to grow them, um, as well as taking care of them and making sure that you harvest the seeds uh, for next year too. So really looking forward to be able to do that. Uh, it's a fairly uh, a large greenhouse. I'd say it's probably 12 by 12 by 8. Uh, so we've got quite a bit of growing room in here in addition to the gardens that we have outside uh, and anything else that might pop up once we once we see all the snow melt. Who knows what's underneath all the snow. Yeah, so, true enough. Yeah. I think you got that covered. That was a good yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll show you on this side here. I think uh, what we're going to do for the gardening side of things, like uh, what we're planting in here, mostly it's going to be uh, tomatoes. Um, your peppers are going to be in here. Um, Cucumbers. Cucumbers, uh, or we're thinking things that ripen, um, not all, all at the same time. So peppers, you're gonna have some that are ready to go. Some are still ripening. Same with your tomatoes. So being that we're probably about 20 feet away from the house or 30 feet away from the house, you can uh, simply as you're uh, tossing a salad or whatever, and you need a tomato or whatever, you can come out here grab and pick one <laughs> and pick one, right? Um, so we haven't figured out exactly what we're planting in here. Obviously this side here has no stakes or anything um, to, for supports, but uh, I'll grab this and I'll take you over onto this side here. So they do have some rebar sitting in here, uh, some different stakes uh, in the ground here so that you can support whatever you're uh, growing. And then uh, they also have some fencing that they put up along here. So you, if, like this one I would almost think you use as to, uh, tomatoes and then you can tie up your tomatoes as they go and then you just come and pick them as they want. Uh oh, one thing I realized that's being so high there, if you notice, she, she might need <laughs> a little stepping stool. <laughs> uh, might have to get a little step stool for me or I'll just uh, send Andre out here to go get me some tomatoes. Oh yeah, <laughs> well, that's fine. No problem. Yeah. Anyways, I think that's, uh, that's the tour. That's about it. If you looked actually out our front door, you could actually see our house from here. Andre mentioned that it was about 20 to 30 feet uh, from, from our house, which is really nice. You can see that the dogs have made another pathway there for us to so kindly walk along. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can see we've got our solar panels here on the side and our house, we've got a greenhouse here. That's uh, that's the property. I think that's about it. It's uh, it's definitely an adventure, and it's certainly a lot to to handle and to take in. But we're we're doing a pretty good job, I think, so far. Slowly but surely. Yeah, slowly but surely. It's, it's a different way of life, but we're really excited. Thanks for coming along oh, with us actually, on the tour. Oh, actually, we forgot one thing. What did we forget? If I can show them down the hill, there we got our other garden. Oh yeah, so it's let's, covered let's, in two feet uh, of snow. Yeah, well, that's fine. You can see the fence line. <laughs> so before we finish off this video here, you know, let's take a walk on another other dog's trails here. So if you look down there, right along there, we got about a uh, 25, 30 by 60 garden and uh, uh, our water supply is sitting right there. So what we do, uh, 
for watering the plants, we'll just hook them up, uh, hose up to that. Kimberly fell down into, uh, <laughs> what is this, about a foot and a half of snow. <laughs> so we'll hook up the hose in there, run it down the, down the uh, hill here to water those plants. And uh, being that it's such a steep hill, uh, we could probably power a, a sprinkler or something down there just to water everything. Yeah, and gravity and will then, feed it. Uh, from what we also understand is we have uh, some fruit trees down there, an apple tree that uh, we are not sure if it's uh, survived the bear attack from last year. But uh, I guess uh, we'll, find, we'll out. find out when everything <laughs> melts and when the bears come back. So now you can say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Thanks for coming on our tour with us. Uh, if you've got any questions or you want to see more of, uh, of a certain thing or you have some comments or, or whatever, leave us a comment or a, a, a suggestion or whatever. Smash that subscribe button. Hit the, hit the like button. The bell, yes, for the, notifications. No, uh, no, the thumbs up. The thumbs up. So the, <laughs> the thumbs up too. Yeah, yes, tell YouTube absolutely. you like these things. <laughs> Uh, thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Really appreciate it, and uh, we'll catch you next time. All right, take care.